State Senator Greg Tarver joins us now this morning. Uh, short notice, uh, Senator. Thanks for your time. How are you this morning? Doing very well. You you filed suit against State Representative Barbara Norton, claiming she does not live in Senate District 39. Uh, tell me tell me your evidence of that. Well, number one, uh, we have a signed lease. We have people who say that she lives on Spyglass, and we have all the information that is necessary a water bill, et cetera, to prove that she lives on Spyglass. With her name on that water bill? Correct. Okay, the house on McAlpine, does she own that, lease that? No, she don't have anything to do with the home on uh, McAlpine. It's something that she picked up during the time, I think a relative lived there, and they lived there with a sex offender. Okay, but okay, wait, she's claiming that address that where a sex offender lives and that's correct and but you you're certain she doesn't ever live there no she never lived there uh we've had people to uh in the community say she don't live there we have people in spyglass area say she lived there uh so i think that she's committing fraud on the people of district 39 and she dishonoring the people of district 39 because she really don't live there so mr greg how exactly Walk us through the process, how this happens. You're sitting at home one night. You're watching Bonanza on TV. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an old guy. You're watching something, and the phone rings, and it's it's somebody who says, Senator Tarver, I have some interesting information. How do you find stuff? This How does this work? Well, number one, you have to ask the attorney how it works. Uh, he know more about the court proceedings than I know. But somebody but had to own. somebody had to say to you, we think something may be awry. Or did you look into it? Did you hire a detective? How exactly does all this happen? Well, we hired a, we hired a detective. Number one. Uh, at the same time, people in that community on Spyglass say Barbara lived over there. They called and told me that she don't live in the district. You'd be surprised. People are very concerned about this because they realize what she's trying to do. And it's not right. And is, what she's trying to do is a violation of the law. How many times in previous races have you hired detectives to to look into your opponent's backgrounds? Well, number one, I've never had this to happen before to me. So I never had that opportunity because people usually don't violate the law and say they live one place and live in another. Okay, the law requires in the Senate race you to be domiciled in the district in which you run. Domiciled means live there, correct? That's correct for one year. Prior to you to, to the election? Prior to the election, that's correct. Okay, I need to ask you something, because you and I have talked about this before. And um, you voted in the Shreveport mayor's race. You don't live in the city of Shreveport. Is the law well, di is all different in that regard? Yes, it is. You can vote any way you like to vote. Uh, but the domicile is the most important issue. And in, uh, I'm domiciled at 2062 North Cross Drive. That's been no secret to no one. You can have many residents, and I have a residence in the city's report, but I don't domicile in the city's report. Okay. I lay my head every night in 2062 North Cross Drive. But to vote in the mayor's race, you don't have to be domiciled in the city. No, you just you have, have to have an address. Domiciled. So that's, you're, that's you're not law. breaking the law. You're just taking advantage of it, correct? No, I'm, I'm voting where I've always voted all my life at J.S. Williams Mortuary. Okay, but 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 you don't technically live in the city of Shreveport. I live I live at 2062 North Cross Drive on the lake. Okay, and I've been living there since 1988. And by the way, I have been domiciled in the district 39 all of my life, 73 years. You know, some people would say to you, Senator. <laughs> Why mess with this? You know, you're 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 likely the you're the incumbent. You're likely the lead dog in this race. Why mess with this? Why should I let someone defraud the people of District 39, the people who I represent? Why should I let someone do that? Mr. Greg Aaron said why, a couple of seconds ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Finish your thoughts or go ahead. Why should I let someone defraud the people of District 39? Aaron, what type of representative would I be if I let people defraud my, my, my constituent? Aaron had said a couple of seconds ago, in fact, when we covered this in the 6 o'clock hour, this process, this procedure, this gets uh, wrapped up pretty quick, right? Correct. What's the, what's the timetable on that? I think that we go to court 9.30 Friday morning, 
and the decision would be made probably Friday or Monday. And, and I don't know. I don't. I don't understand the court proceedings. I'm not. I'm not a lawyer. I'm an undertaker. Lo- loser, losing side likely appeals. That's a quick process too, right? Well, yes, if if they want to. Okay. But I don't. I don't. Let me say. I don't think Barbara will appeal this because number one, everybody in the district, other than you all, know that she don't live in the district. Would you appeal it? Uh, if you yes, lose. If, well, the, 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 he made a decision. I don't think that the decision he make is going to be let Barbara run in a district that she don't even live in. I don't think so. The, so. the district judge, if he, if he rules in your favor, would she be disqualified from the race at that point? That's correct. And that's your goal? My goal is not to defraud the people of District 39. And that is what she's trying to do. State Senator Greg Tarver, thanks for your time this morning. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm.